Evoking God's commandment, love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, officials in South Africa have used this mantra to fight the malaria scourge. Across the Rainbow Nation provinces of KwaZulu-Natal, Mpumalanga and Limpopo, this message continues to work effectively. However, there is still a challenge. Travelers from Mozambique bring in almost 70% cases of malaria. Where are we bordering Mozambique? We've got the hospital Manguzi, most of the clinics under Manguzi are the ones which are reporting these cases, including Seleni Hospital. We also have Ndrumo, which used to be a very, you know, uh, challenged area. It was one of our hotspots. There was a, uh, an agreement with Mozambique to do house spraying on the Mozambique side of the border. In the 2011-2012 financial year in KwaZulu-Natal, 18% of all cases were classified as local, 43% imported and 39 percent unclassified the highest cases were from mozambique other countries include ethiopia at 20 percent congo ghana guinea kenya madagascar and even uganda the kwazulu natal health department through the malaria control program is determined to see no resurgence of the malaria epidemic in the province after experiencing five epidemics between 1996 and 2000 out of 11 districts in the province three remain at risk Mkanya Kude, Utungulu and Zululand. We're just considering surveillance throughout the area uh, to make sure that we continue the fight to clean all these local cases. By 2018 to 0%, they also have a strategy for travelers who often bring in new cases. So that we can educate people, we can uh, request to take blood smear at the point of entry. KwaZulu Natal has dramatically reduced malaria cases, but health officials and the public in the province cannot sit on their laurels. One of the challenges is to reach out to communities that live in remote hamlets. Which needs resources, extra resources, need extra teams to remind people about malaria. Yeah, and then you find that the community don't usually close their water. They keep their water for a long time in the containers without closing them, so the mosquitoes might find the breeding site there. Overall, in the whole country, according to the World Health Organization, cases have reduced from an annual average of over 36,000 during 2000 to 2005 up to 6,000 cases in 2009, a reduction of 83%. In the same period, deaths dropped from 127 to 45, a 65% reduction. The reductions in malaria cases have largely reduced the workload across hospitals, says Dr. Vaughan, who is the district family physician. 14 years ago, one of our little clinics was seeing 7,000 patients in a month. Now, this same clinic, I understand, last month had four cases. So that's a big, that's a huge difference. I mean, at one point we had most of our beds had one patient with malaria on top of the bed and two patients with malaria under the bed. Uganda, with a lesser population of 35 million compared to South Africa's 52 million, continues to grapple with malaria cases, which stand at a staggering 15 million almost each year. This is taking a heavy toll on the health sector. But fears of an increase in South Africa in cases are expressed. In the whole country, in January this year, a sharp peak of over 3,000 odd cases was observed. The deaths have, however, been relatively low. In January 2014, only 17 people died out of 3,279 infections. And in February 2014, infections sharply fell to 1,321, while only five died. Still, if you compare this to about 300 cases that occur in Uganda, not in a month, but almost every day, then South Africa is doing well. Where in a month, Uganda loses over 9,000 people South Africa can lose less than 10. Globally, according to the World Health Organization, 1.1 million deaths have been averted since 2001 through WHO's recommended interventions. The Millennium Development Goal number 6C of halting malaria by 2015 has been realized by over 80% in South Africa. They are now on to reversing the incidence of the disease. In Africa, South Africa was the first country to introduce artemisinin-based combination therapy in 2001. You know, there have been papers to indicate that if the drug had been changed a bit earlier, you know, lives would have been saved and there would have been a, the epidemic would have been a bit less. Dr. Vaughan says that a three-pronged approach has been effective in the fight against malaria. Make sure your drug works and make sure your spray works and 
as you, if unless you're an island and in Africa you're part of the continent, you also need to have collaboration with your neighbours because if you've got a malaria epidemic just across your border then it's going to be very hard for you to get control near the border. Without such efforts, the undiminished scourge will continue to ravage communities, killing an estimated 600,000 people annually, mostly children in sub-Saharan Africa. Flores Salimba, NTV Njuzini, KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa.